What's going on, folks? It's K Spade, the prospect. I'm back with a brand new Madden 16 franchise mode video. And, folks, all of the hard work, the scouting, the long practices, the roster changes, it paid off. And the highest level you could even expect for it to pay off. My team was able to lift the Lombardi Trophy. We got head coach Ed Reed a trophy in three short years of being a head coach. And another thing that I don't think anybody saw coming, Josh Williams was able to be Super Bowl MVP. Who ever saw that coming? But unfortunately, man, for the coaching staff out here, it's a short-lived celebration. You're celebrating one day, and like a week later, you're focusing on the offseason. You got business to take care of, and the decisions made in the offseason are going to impact this team moving forward. So the first thing I did was go through and add all of the experience points to all my players to, to try to make these players better going into the next season. Also, I had about 22,000 head coaching XP points, and I wanted to spend those, as you can see, um, I already had the, the free safety and strong safety prep modifiers purchased. I went on and bought the cornerback. That only made sense. I mean, Ed Reed was a defensive back. So if he can give a boost to the amount of experience a player gets, it definitely should be a defensive back. I feel like he could coach a defensive back better than any other position, right? I was surprised to see this. I scrolled down and saw that the Oakland Raiders extended Ed Reed's contract by three years. That was to be expected. Now here's where things get a little funky, y'all. Y'all ready for some fun? Um, the offseason was so long, I decided to split it into two videos. So this is video one of that whole thing. We had 13 players to resign. That's the thing, man. You win the Super Bowl, a lot of these guys was key players in it, and they want their money, right? Everybody can't be returned. You have to go through here, and it's tough to put a value on these guys' heads. Just looking, I know we, we want to keep DeAndre. We want to keep the offensive lineman. He was a young offensive lineman who I felt like had some upside. We want to keep TJ Carey if we can. But we definitely are going to keep punter Marquette King and the two linebackers. Now, we, we switched. We initially started off as a 4-3 defense. We switched to the 3-4, and we saw both of the middle linebackers really flourish in that. So I'm going to try to keep as many people as possible. So let me explain what I'm doing here. I didn't offer any player exactly what they was what they was asking for i would shoot just a tad bit below because if you don't resign him here you see deandre took his deal if you don't resign him here you get another opportunity after the season like this is like going it this is before going into free agency where every team has the option to you know get in on the bidding so if they don't like the deals here it's not the end of the the, the negotiation they just get a chance to go and flirt with some other teams if that's what you want to call it I still got a chance to sign these guys Gabe Jackson I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys know we're gonna end up hitting Gabe with the franchise tag because he was drafted kind of far back he's an 84 overall at 27 so I like his I like his rating but we can tag him for like 8 million so instead of coming in here letting him break the bank we could do that now TJ Carey played great for us this season folks but he is 28 years old he wants a four-year contract. He's talking 17 and a half, almost 18 million dollars. I would like to keep him. I don't want to spend that for him, y'all. I don't. Keep in mind, we just drafted Victor Small. And he came in the league at 80 overall. So he's only two points lower than TJ Carey. And he's only like 22 years old. So his ceiling is tremendously higher. I'm not going to let TJ rake my wallet. You know, I like TJ. I want to keep him. And I'm not mad at TJ for wanting to get his money. That's how this business works. I understand it. David Harris wanted a two-year deal. He is 34 years old. I can't fathom having a 36-year-old middle linebacker. He's just an 81 overall. Because he's older, his progression is moving real slow. So it's not a good chance that we're going to make him very much better than he is today. He's only going to decline. So I'm going to offer him a one-year deal. And... To my surprise, he understands. He know what's up. He went on and took it. So Gabe didn't take his deal. TJ Carey didn't take his deal. So far, everybody else is liking what they're being offered here. And some of this is the players just willing to make sacrifices to stay with the team because they realize that we got a good chemistry. We got a good nucleus, and they want to stay with it. Curtis Lofton is 32, so he's two years younger than Harris. And quite frankly, he was probably one of our biggest defensive contributors this year. He played well, so he wanted a two-year deal. I'm, I'm comfortable offering him a two-year deal. He took his deal as well. Lee Smith. 
This one gets tricky, y'all, because I like Lee. I know I don't use Lee a lot because a lot of times, you know, I like my receivers. But I like what Lee brings us. He's a pretty good blocker. He's got some pretty good hands. His hands aren't as good as Clive Walford's. I like Clive, too. Uh, my, in my mind, I would like to run an ace formation and go double tight, and then you get the best of both worlds. If I go double tight, then you don't put Marcel Reese on the field, who's a hell of a fullback. And like you guys have told me, and I look, and you guys are right, Marcel Reese would be a hell of a tight end. So do I deal one of these guys? And I, I don't know. Like it's it's a big it's a big question mark right now. But right now, I like what Lee is is offering the guys. Uh, he's asking for a four year deal. I kind of don't feel too comfortable with that. So we're gonna offer him almost a million dollars less than what he's asking. And to my surprise, he took it. Once again, some of these guys are just like, hey, coach, we know what's up. Tavon Austin, we are going to resign at, at any expense because he was a game changer for us. He is a big play waiting to happen. We want to keep him here. You guys probably won't dig this, but we're not even going to try to resign Derek Carr. Look at this now. Tavon wanted $8.8 .8 million over four years. I, I worked the deal up with $8.8 .8 million over four years. It's exactly what he's asking for. We offer him the deal. He says he's going to talk to my agent and get back to us. And he, he comes back. He's not interested in the deal. So I, I think he needs to fire his agent. I don't know what the hell he's asking for. Maybe he wants more bonus money. I don't know. We gave him exactly what he wanted. But like I was saying, man, we are not going to resign Derek Carr. Derek Carr is too good of a quarterback to just be on the bench. I would rather him go to another team and be great. So I'm going to do Derek a favor and let Derek walk. He can go get money. Somebody's going to, you know, cut that check for him. Now, I know y'all don't like that. Y'all really like Derek Carr. Some of y'all were saying that I should, I should bench Josh Williams and play Derek Carr. And Derek got a lot of burn off the fact that Josh couldn't stay on the field very much. But when Josh was on the field, to me... Uh, I like this weapon. I felt like he was better. Here we go, folks. The last person we're going to try to re-sign is uh, Tim Tebow. We're not going to offer Tim Tebow a big-time deal because, quite frankly, he doesn't do a lot for this team. He does run the read option pretty well. He's got a good carry rating and he doesn't get injured. So I like that. But it's a lot of other guys that can come in and do the same thing that Tim Tebow did, probably even better. So we offer Tebow a deal. Tebow didn't like the deal we offer him. Who cares? Now, this is the offseason season free agency period where other people can bid on your players. Uh, Tavon called us back like, yo, that deal y'all offer? Hey, April Fool, where do I sign? I want that deal. I'm like, Tavon, you almost messed up, bruh. Like, you almost was out of here. Because I went to the free agent list and I saw DJX. I wanted to show y'all this guy right here at number five, Janelle Young, right? Six foot four, 236 pound wide receiver. They got him being top five, you know, draft talent. Turns out I, I saw the little ad in the newspaper that said that this guy won the Heisman. He's a Heisman Trophy winner. And he won the Heisman off of his play on both sides of the ball. So I felt like whoever drafted him, because I knew I wouldn't be able to get him, whoever drafted him, I wanted to go through and see, you know, his ratings. Because he looked like the man in college. The offseason stage is over. Here's what we was able to do. We went after a uh, right outside linebacker. We wasn't able to sign him. Of course, Tebow came back. We went after Tyrod Taylor. And we really did that to put the pressure on Tebow. Tyrod, of course, was asking for more money. I didn't want to pay all that money. So we went back with Tebow. But we brought in right guard DeCastro, who's at 97 overall. Now, we're going to put him on the line right beside Rick Wagner, who was our big offensive lineman acquisition last offseason. So the weakest part of the team right now is the offensive line. So we build it. Probably not that overnight building thing that we'd all like to see, but we're building. So last year we brought in a right tackle in the 90s. This year we're bringing in a right guard in the high 90s. And we are giving Josh Williams more time in the pocket, better protection, and at the same time, some guys who can really clear some lanes for these running backs we got to just be great, right? So there we go. Free agency signing period is over. We what? We didn't get a chance to keep TJ Carey. I'm not upset with TJ, man. It's a business. TJ chasing that check. Go get it, TJ. I hope wherever you go, get you another ring. And if you never get another one, you probably don't care because you got one here. Our first pick of the draft, I reached, y'all. We went with an outside linebacker, Wayne White, out of LSU. Uh, it wasn't a terrible reach, but we could have done better. I wasn't prepared. It kind of came up 
I, I didn't even fill out my, my watch list. Like you can go through here and put people on your watch list like Trey Campbell. This guy from Rhode Island, not a big college. To me, his, his draft combine numbers blew us away. And he is the 19th ranked cornerback. It's 18 better cornerbacks, let the liquor tell it. But this is the guy that we wanted to get. And you know, Coach Ed Reed has an eye for talent, especially in that secondary. He knows what he's looking for. So you can see I was going through trying to ask some people to the watch list. We got Antoine Jeffrey right there. I felt like he was another player. When it was time for me to draft, and I went back to my, my watch list, some of my guys was missing. So we went on and took Trey. So we took Trey, and it said that he was 27th in true talent. And we got him at 64, so that's a great pick. He comes in being a 78 overall, so he's no Victor Small. But, hey... He comes in pretty damn good. So we're going to probably throw him in that nickel spot. Here, here's my watch list. Now, look at this right here. I'm jumping around, y'all. Bear with me. Lucky Dwyer wasn't great at anything, but he was middle of the road at a lot. Uh, we went on and took Ben Butler. We needed a backup quarterback. And this guy come in number 11, true talent. We come right back and draft Lucky. He was 106 in true talent. So we kind of got something going on right here. The next pick, we went with Gandy. This was a pretty good pick as well. So we are building pieces. These guys might not be stars initially. They may never be stars, but I feel like each and every one of these guys can be solid players, role players, man. You got to have them too, right? Everybody can't be stars. Everybody can't be pro bowlers. So we come back right here, man, and we're going to draft this guy right here. This guy is going to be Johnny Hithard's backup, and I know what y'all are saying. Why are we drafting him? A strong safety because we technically don't even have one behind Johnny hit hard and you know Johnny sometimes he'll go in there reckless abandon head first make a big hit and knock yourself out we've seen it before so the draft is over in the next video I will show you guys the like training results or whatever what these guys look like in the depth chart and we'll move from there but that's all I got for today's video man I hope you guys enjoyed this I know it was not gameplay the next one won't be either but we getting there folks and I'm out the next time, Mike. Peace.